May grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, the Father, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. The Word of God, which is the text upon which the sermon will be based, is found in the Old Testament book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, where we read as follows, that portion of the Word of God, that will be the sermon text. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So far the text, in the name of Jesus, who has obtained eternal redemption for us with his blood, dear fellow redeemed sinners and creatures of the one true only living, creating and preserving triune God. Blood, the blood of Jesus is the central theme of the Bible and it is the central theme of all Christianity, which is the only true religion in the world. The blood, the blood of Jesus. The Holy Ghost, the third person of the triune Godhead, had John the Apostle write these words. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. The same third person of the triune Godhead inspired the Apostle Peter to write these words. Ye know that ye were redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. The Holy Ghost inspired the Apostle Paul to write these words. Ye are justified by his blood. The Bible says that Christians, the Christ believers, the ones who are in heaven, sing these words. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain and hath redeemed us to God by his blood. The Bible says Christ by his blood hath obtained eternal redemption for us. Now those are all in the New Testament. Is it in the Old Testament too? Oh yes it is. I take you back to Exodus, to the context of the verse that is the sermon text. Nine times Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had hardened his heart after God had sent a plague upon his land, he would not let the Israelites go, as he was commanded to do by God, but he hardened his heart and would not let them go. Nine times through Moses, God's prophet, God had warned Pharaoh, horrible things are going to happen to you and your land, to you and your nation, to you and your people, your subjects, horrible things are going to happen to you. Nine times God warned him. And God sent plagues just as he had promised. Frogs everywhere, gnats everywhere, darkness everywhere, you name it, on and on, devastating plagues over the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh saw what was happening to his country, all these horrible things that God was sending upon it, he softened his heart for just a moment until God took away the plague. But then Pharaoh hardened his heart again and would not let Israel go from their slavery in his land. Nine times. The tenth time came and God again sent Moses to Pharaoh and said to Pharaoh, I warn you again, the most devastating thing is yet to come upon your land and upon your own house. 
on a certain night coming, God will slay the firstborn in every house, in every family in your country. They will all die in an instant. You are warned. Let my people go. Pharaoh did not heed the warning again. But Moses went back to the Israelites and said, this is what's going to happen. The angel of death will be sent by God over the land of Egypt and the day coming. And before that happens, God wants you to do this. I don't care how crazy it sounds. I don't care how stupid it sounds. I don't care how unreasonable it sounds. I don't care how unscientific it sounds. Do it. In every house, take your best young lamb, without spot and without blemish, and you kill it. And you take the blood from that young lamb that you have slain, and you sprinkle it on the frame of your outside door of your house. And God promises that when the angel of death comes to Egypt that night, when he sees the blood of that lamb on your house, he will pass over your house and the firstborn in that house will not die. You are warned. It's in the Old Testament too. That blood of that young lamb that was slain in all the homes and the slaves' houses that night, that was a symbol, that was a token, that was a foreshadowing of how God would save sinners. When he sends death upon all people, and hell. That was a foreshadowing that the Lamb of God would come. The Lamb sent by God, in fact the Lamb who was God himself, he would bring to you security. He would bring to you peace with God. He would bring life instead of death. Just as in Egypt where the lamb's blood was spread, there was security and peace. So today and every day, God says to the world, I warn you, if you don't have the blood of Jesus Christ sprinkled on your heart by faith, you will die. Eternally in torment. But if you have the blood of Jesus in your heart by faith in him alone, as your God and your Savior, then you will have forgiveness of your sins, you will have security from death, and you will have peace with God. He will forgive all your sins for the sake of that blood of Jesus. Either I'll shed your blood, or you will believe in Jesus' blood as your substitute. This is a historical event reported to us in the book of Exodus in the Bible. This is truth. This is reality. This really happened. This is historical. The killing of the lamb foreshadowed the greatest event in history that would occur, and that is the death of Jesus Christ. The true lamb whose blood cleanses from all sin for all people. All people, like the Egyptians, are exposed to death for all have sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth it shall die. Thus saith the Lord. There's your warning. Don't be like Pharaoh. Ignore the warning. 
This is the ABCs of Christianity. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It's basic. It is the only true religion in the world. Everything else is of the devil. This is the ABCs of God's Word, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. God warned Pharaoh, plagues will come upon your land, terrible, devastating plagues, especially the plague of death. Is there a way of escape? Just like the Israelites took, is there a way of escape from this angel of death? Yes, there is. The same way of escape the Israelites took, the blood of the Lamb. It's the only way to escape the angel of death. The only possibility, as God says here, for he will say, I will pass over you. If you have the blood of Jesus as your trust, God promises you, I will pass over you when I destroy the world. When I kill people in the world, I will pass over you, you will not die. The blood of Jesus Christ saves us. The lamb without spot and blemish that was sacrificed in every house that night in Egypt whose blood was saving them from death that night, it typifies Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, this is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Just as that Lamb in Egypt that was slain in the house of every Israelite was young and innocent and without blemish or spot. He rep that, that lamb is a symbol of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sinless. He is without spot. He is without blemish because he is God. God the Son, come down from heaven, sent by God the Father to become a true man, living under the same Ten Commandments we must live under by God, but never once sinned in any way against those commandments. He is without spot. He is without blemish. Just like those lambs in Egypt, and just as the blood of the, that lamb turned away the angel of death, so the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross will keep the angel of death away from us. God promises it here. He de as he decreed in Egypt, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Do you heed God's warning? Do you trust in the blood of Jesus Christ that it paid for all your sins in God's sight? Then you will be saved. This is not speculative. This is not open to doubt or discussion or argument. This is the ABC of God's Word. This is as basic as God can make it. If you refuse his way of escape, you will die in your sins. It will be disaster for you. And many people today will enter into that disaster for they have not the sprinkled blood of Jesus by faith on their soul. And God did slay every firstborn just as he said he would in Egypt that night from the house of Pharaoh to the house of the poorest person in Egypt except those houses which had slain the lamb and proved that that lamb had died instead of the firstborn in that house. The lamb was sacrificed as a substitute for the firstborn in that house. 
And the angel of death saw that when he saw the blood of that lamb on the door. Only in the blood of the lamb was there safety and deliverance in the land of Egypt. And only in the blood of Jesus Christ is there safety and deliverance for us. This is the most profound wisdom in the world. Nothing is wiser. Nothing is smarter. And it's only found in the word of God. But there God warns all people. That we have sinned. We have broken his law. And there is a judgment awaiting us for that. And the only safety... The only way we can avoid that punishment, the only way we can stand before the judgment seat of God in our end in this world and have him say, not guilty, you may enter into my perfect heaven forever instead of being sent away for eternal punishment. The only way is to have those sins punished by someone else in your place. And praise be to God, he has provided that substitute for you. God himself, God the Son, the Lamb of God. Your Lamb, your Passover Lamb, your sacrificial Lamb. He is the only way that you may be reinstated in a peaceful relationship between you and God. Man is fallen. God is perfect. The only way that can be bridged, the only way that a perfect God can forgive our sins is if someone else came and paid those sins for us, shed his blood for our blood. The only way. This is the ABC of the Bible. This is the only way of peace for the troubled soul. This is the only solid ground of hope for another life. Without it, there is only darkness and disorder and despair. It's like you're on a ship in a stormy typhoon at sea. There's a typhoon raging. It rocks the boat. There are rocks and shoals, everything to sink the boat, the ship. But then all of a sudden you find yourself in a peaceful harbor. That peaceful harbor is the blood of Jesus Christ. It was shed for you for all your sins. He has paid the price of your sins before God's throne of judgment. There is peace with God through Jesus. That's what this peace that this text brings means. The blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I, God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite everybody else. That's God's promise. He makes it throughout the Bible. It's the ABC of the Bible. What's awaiting all people without that blood of Christ? Is a, is a torment more terrible than any bodily harm you can imagine in this world, any horrible death you can imagine in this world. It's a doom of the soul under God's full wrath. And so he is warning us. He is warning us it's coming but I have provided one way of deliverance. 
and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Period. If you have not that faith in Jesus, you are damned and you are cursed forever. But with that faith, in the blood of Jesus, it, he shed his blood for you, in your place, for your sins, you will have peace with God in heaven forever. Most people take out this part of the verse, when I see the blood. They don't believe that. They don't believe in the blood of the Lamb. They just look at the next part of the verse. I will pass over you. Oh, everybody's going to heaven. See, God promises he'll pass over everybody. Oh, no. He qualifies, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. There's no other way. It is not enough that they slew the lamb. They had to take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of their house. When I see the blood, it isn't enough that Jesus died on a cross for the sins of the whole world. It doesn't mean the whole world's going to heaven. He says to the whole world, when I see the blood on your soul, when you have that faith in Jesus, oh yes, the lamb has been slain, but that doesn't benefit you until God sees the blood in you, the blood of Jesus on your soul. God specifically says, sprinkle the blood openly on the door and the angel of death must see it. That shows that you have faith in what God has provided to you as your only way of escape. So what good is it to be warned if you don't heed the warning. God warns the world. He's warned the world all along through his word, inspired through the prophets and apostles. Every time before God plagued Egypt, he warned them. He warned their leader, Pharaoh, in advance, I'm warning you. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Pharaoh did not heed the warning. God in his grace and mercy doesn't just throw us into hell. He warns us first because of our sin, which must be punished eternally. He warns us, here's what's going to happen to you. It's like you come to a railroad crossing when you're driving your car. The lights flash, the bells ding. Sometimes even a gate comes down. That's a warning. Don't get on the track. God is sending you that kind of a warning. He's sending the whole world that kind of a warning. I'm warning you. If you die without the blood of Jesus sprinkled on your soul by faith in him alone, you're going to get hit by a freight train like you've never imagined before. What else can God do? He doesn't just warn us and say there's nothing you can do about it. He himself comes and provides the way of escape. A lot of people feel perfectly safe. They've ignored God's warnings their whole life. They think everything's going to be fine for eternity. They think they have safety without the blood of Jesus Christ by faith in their hearts. Well, what good is it to be told that Christ is the only means of escape if you treat it like an idle tale? Like a myth or a fable or 
simply the ideas of some ancient men. Does you no good for God to warn you if you say, well, this is not truth. I don't need to believe that. Only the true believers who have done what God has said, they have seen the Lamb of God crucified for their sins, shed his blood to cleanse them from all iniquity before God the judge, and they have put their trust in him. They have said this is real. This is the truth. I trust in Jesus. He is my savior for all eternity. Only those people have the right in the Bible to call themselves Israel, the saved ones. Yes, that's right. Israel isn't some country in the Near East. Israel are the true believers in Jesus Christ. That is Israel. And all Israel will be saved. The Lamb has been slain. It is Jesus. But have you taken his blood and sprinkled it on your souls by faith in him alone? Let us believe in Jesus' blood and let us love Jesus for being our lamb, our substitute. As the great hymn goes, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not lean on anything else. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all of man's understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.